opportunity to present here today. I would also like to um, thank my supervisor, Mr. Alvaro Bedoyeronga, for the training um, provided to me with this unique opportunity. He's the only um, gynecologist that provides a dedicated endometriosis scanning clinic in the West Midlands. So to introduce, ultrasound scanning in the assessment of endometriosis is now well established and is now recommended by NICE in its new guideline. Endometriosis, ultrasound scanning with the use of the International Deep Endometriosis Analysis, IDEA consensus, and the MUSA criteria, morphological uterus sonographic assessment, can be diagnostic and can stratify the surgical approach for the management of endometriosis patients. So looking at the IDEA criteria, basic steps required for the endometriosis scanning. Step one is the routine evaluation of the uterus and ad adnexa. We're looking for signs particularly of adenomyosis in the presence of uh, endometriomas. Step two, the evaluation of, of sonographic soft markers of superficial endometriosis. This is site-specific tenderness and, ovarian, and lack of ovarian mobility. Step three is the assessment of the posterior compartment, the pouch of Douglas, and also we assess the anterior compartment, more specifically in step four, looking for signs of deep infiltrating endometriosis in the rectosigmoid and in the bladder. The MUSA criteria of adenomyosis. We require two of the criteria to be able to diagnose adenomyosis sonographically. Examples of sonographic diagnosis of adenomyosis include asymmetrical thickening of the anterior and posterior walls of the myometrium, myometrial cysts, hypoechoic islands in the myometrium, echogenic subendometriotic lines or buds, fan shapes shadowing, translational vascularity, irregular junctional zone between the endometrium and the myometrium. Superficial endometriosis um, is one of the things we look out for when we do our endometriosis ultrasound scanning. Um, we have performed several audits as part of our endometriosis centre in the Midland Metropolitan Endometriosis Centre. We have performed a retrospective audit looking at our surgeries from January 22 to December 23 so a two-year retrospective audit, looking at particularly at the patients who had peritonectomy without any concomitant deep infiltrating endometriosis, 97% of our patients underwent preoperative endometriosis ultrasound scanning, and 90% of these had preoperative sonographic diagnosis of superficial endometriosis, and this was subsequently diagnosed on histology. Here I show... An example of a negative sliding sign, we can see here the right ovary is adherent to the right pelvic sidewall. This is <coughs> suggestive of superficial peritoneal endometriosis. And the ovary is not freely sliding, so this is a negative sliding sign. Now moving on to adenomyosis. In our two-year retrospective audit, we looked also at our hysterectomy cases for patients with suspected adenomyosis without any concomitant deep infiltrating endometriosis. When we looked at our cases, we found a 100% correlation of the diag preoperative diagnosis of adenomyosis with the subsequent histological confirmation. So if we look at these images of a patient with clear adenomyosis on ultrasound, we can see the antiverted retroflexed uterus giving an S-shaped sign, heterogeneous myometrium, and the clearly thickened posterior wall as compared to the anterior myometrium. And here we can see translational vascularity, which is another diagnostic feature of adenomyosis on ultrasound. Now looking at deep infiltrating endometriosis. So in the year of 2023, we performed 67 surgeries for endometriosis. Out of those, six presented with previous MRI images, and three presented with external ultrasound scan, largely being performed in the community. This left 58 patients who required imaging once they presented to our endometriosis centre. 
all 58 patients went, underwent endometriosis ultrasound scanning in our department, and only eight of the patients with deep infiltrating endometriosis suspected from our scanning needed further assessment with MRI. So here we demonstrate that under 15% of our patients, surgical patients are now are requiring MRI, and this is helping us in reduce the need for burdening on MRI department and MDT workload prior to surgery. Here I, you, we can see a large rectal nodule and another patient with a large rectal nodule, which can even some can say it's better demonstrated by ultrasound as compared to the MRI. And this was diagnosed preoperatively. And then looking at the anterior compartment, we can see a lady with a large bladder nodule and the image, corresponding image from the MRI scan is So in conclusion, endometriosis ultrasound scanning with the use of the IDEA soft markers is highly sensitive for the diagnosis of superficial peritoneal endometriosis. And likewise, the MUSA criteria can highly, has high sensitivity for the diagnosis of adenomyosis. The IDEA consensus is also extremely effective in, the de in detecting deep infiltrating endometriosis of the rectosigmoid or bladder. Endometriosis ultrasound scanning is a valuable and reliable technique that facilitates the stratification of patients with superficial peritoneal endometriosis and those with deep infiltrating endometriosis or frozen pelvis, which will require MDT and further MDT, which will require MRI and further MDT discussion with regards to joint surgery. Ultrasound stratification reduces the need for MRI and reduces the burden on the MDT workload. So as a trainee, um, we would suggest and advocate for trainees and consultants, especially in endometriosis centers, to look for opportunities in training and providing scanning services in their department. Thank you for listening.